Hello, I'm Katrina Morton, I'm a Central Motor Psychotherapist and today we're going to be looking at our relationship with our emotions, focusing on sadness. Sadness is, again, another one of the emotions that we know we all have. We all experience it at different times. But it's another one of the emotions that can get very, very easily suppressed. When we're growing up, if our sadness was treated with derision or it was ignored or we got punished, or for quite a lot of my clients, if they showed sadness for things, then that could have quite dire consequences for them. That if somebody was trying to upset them and then they looked upset, it would give the person trying to upset them evidence that that's working. And the same is true of a lot of people who were bullied at school, quite severely bullied. They learn very quickly to show nothing, cut off from everything. In order to show nothing, we actually do have to cut off quite effectively from all our emotions and we actually don't feel them, we don't experience them. When we cut off from an emotion like sadness, we have to cut off from every emotion, so we feel very little, but we're not robotic. So even though we've learned to suppress sadness and we don't feel it, it also can have a kind of tipping point that it comes in massive, massive waves and it can be very, very distressing for people. I know a lot of clients, when they come to me first, they'll say, I can't go near the sadness. I can't go near it because if I do, it's gonna be like this massive black hole of sadness that I'm gonna fall into and I'll never get out and I'll be depressed and I'll have no control over it. And it can feel a very frightening prospect. And that's because they have no way of tolerating it. And it's easy enough to say to somebody, well, sadness goes in waves. It comes in waves, it reaches a peak, it comes back down. When we've had a bereavement, if we can't do the sad part of the bereavement process of really missing, feeling the loss, feeling the pain of that person not being around again, then we can get stuck in the bereavement loop. And the problem with that is we never get out the other end where we can really enjoy the happy memories that we had with someone. We're always stuck in that place of sadness. We can't go near it because it's too upsetting. And so we just avoid it. Or they'll say, I never cried. I never had any emotion. I kind of knew I was sad, but I didn't feel it. And it can take years sometimes for that to be experienced. And we have to begin with being able to feel in our body because sadness, like any emotion, is felt through the body. We don't think sadness, we can think sad thoughts, but if we don't feel it and experience it, we never go through that process of feeling really sad, going up and down on the waves of it, processing it, and dealing with it so we can move on. So we have to begin with being able to feel sensations, wake up the connection from the head the body because it's been severed, it's been uncoupled. So we have to be able to wake that up, to feel, before we can start to feel some emotions. And always the way of switching that back on, of increasing that awareness, that connection to our body, our sensations, our emotions, is through the body. When we just stay in our head, then we don't experience any of those things. So we have to be able to go through the body to feel and then to experience the emotions. And what we have to do is have new experiences of it being okay. You can be sad, you can be upset, and it comes in waves and it's not pleasant, it's not a nice feeling, but it comes to an end. The waves get smaller, they get fewer and further between. If we think about a normal bereavement process, it's terrible at the beginning. We're just upset and sad all the time. But knowing that we'll get through it and it will process can be a big comfort so it's not always going to be like this there'll be days that we don't experience the sadness and it won't be as intense when it comes but we have to be able to allow it we have to have the capacity to do it to be able to connect with it to be able to feel it and to know that it's not going to engulf us we're not going to end up on a life with depression and everything feels terrible and dark and gloomy. It does get better. 
And when we can have those experiences in a therapy session or just, you know, evoking them for ourselves, then we'll gain confidence in, I know this feels terrible right now, but I know it's going to pass. And it's just how we humans process things. I think we're the only mammal, might be corrected on that, that actually cries. We have tears, we, we cry. Other mammals do it in different ways, but that's how we do it. It can be messy and it can be unpleasant, but it's how we get to the other end. And it's so worth it, especially for the bereavement process, to be able to enjoy these happy memories, to share the happy memories of the loved ones that we've lost. It's a very, very important emotion. And when we cut off from sadness, we've cut off from everything. Life feels really, really bland. When we start feeling again and connecting with things again, we get more enjoyment out of life. We turn the enjoyment factor back up. We feel all of the emotions, but it's okay. We've got the capacity to do that. We can build our window to do that, and we can build up our resilience to have these strong emotions and deal with them and actually be okay. We should really value our emotions. We're emotional creatures, and we shouldn't ever be either frightened of somebody's intense emotions, and nor should we allow other people to tell us when we're wrong to have them. They should be allowed. They don't affect other people around us. If we all have a good capacity to deal with them, then people being emotional just becomes a normal thing, an expressive thing. It's how we express ourselves. The less we can suppress them, the more enjoyment we get out of life generally. What we notice with sadness in particular is that people can be very uncomfortable with it. They don't like it. Then that's because they haven't got a tolerance for it. How often are we told, oh, don't cry, don't cry, oh, don't be upset. We are upset, and that's a natural thing. When people get upset at work, often they're asked, oh, do you want to go home? And the message is, take your sadness away from me because it makes me uncomfortable. If we can be comfortable with our own sadness, we can be comfortable with other people's sadness. It shouldn't be something that we're told to go away and do quietly in private. That's probably what happened to us when we were younger. So we don't want to be repeating that. If we can check out for ourselves, and we can, what our own relationship is to sadness. If you check in with yourself, just listen to yourself breathing and say, okay, I'm going to say to myself, it's absolutely fine to be sad, to be upset. I completely give myself permission to do that. There's nothing wrong with it. Do you get any kickback? Is there a voice that says, oh no, that's not okay. Just listen to what it says. If you don't, brilliant. But just be aware of that. Pose those things to yourself and just see what comes up. See what answer you get from all these different parts of you. In theory, that sounds absolutely fine. Is it? Is it when you really sit with that? You know, we can check these things out for ourselves. And if we get an answer that is in the negative, that no, maybe it's okay for others, but it's not okay for me, then maybe we need to do a bit of work on that to make it okay. It'll make us more okay with other people who are sad. We just need to go through this process of emotion and being human. I really hope that's been helpful and useful. And if you enjoy this video, give us a big thumbs up subscribe below, send us questions, comments, we love getting them and I look forward to seeing you again. Bye!